Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're gonna check out something else. A travel vlog of sorts by the channel Jinyada. I hope I pronounced that right. Probably not. Anyways, the video is called What I Learned About Shia Islam in Iran. Visiting Lady Fatima's Shrine. So for people that don't know, I come from an Orthodox Christian background and I reverted to Islam, alhamdulillah. And since then, I never took a sectarian approach. I don't like to box myself in, but rather see myself simply as a Muslim, a submitter to God. So therefore, I have the privilege that I don't have to identify classically with Sunnism or Shiism in that sense. As I said, I'm just a Muslim, alhamdulillah. But if I would be pressed on the subject matter, I would say that it's fair to label me as a Sunni Muslim. Nevertheless, I'm always open to learn. And that's why today we're going to check out some information about Shia Islam. But guys, before we do so, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. <laughs> Why always the hitting, bro? Hello and welcome back. It's Today we are in Qom. And let me tell you, I want to share my experience visiting the Lady Fatima Shrine, a place of deep spiritual significance for Shia Muslims. And as a Sunni Muslim, mosque. this was an eye-opening and humbling journey for me. So remember, traveling isn't just about seeing new places. It's about learning, understanding, and connecting with different cultures and beliefs. And oh my goodness, this shrine attracts countless pilgrims from all over the world. And it's not only Iranians. I have saw people from Pakistan, India, and many other countries paying their respect. And the yeah, energy and devotion in, other countries. in this space was just overwhelming. A little bit about Lady Fatima. She was known as Fatima al Masuma, who was the daughter of the seventh Imam, Imam Musa, and the sister of the eighth Imam, Imam Ali. She is revered by Shia Muslims for her piety, knowledge, and devotion to Islam. So, before we go in into the shrine, I had to change uh, to something they call chaudhary. As you see, women that are walking by, they were in the black chaudhary. So, the uh, I like translator, it. So, uh, someone who's basically uh, explains more details for foreigners came in. So Ali had to stay in and I went to the women's section. So this is the thing that's called Chaudhary. It's a big garment. You have to cover up yourself. I mean, I was still covered, but it's just to show more respect and feel like, you know, you're, you're just like everybody else. Yeah, it reminds me of Nabaya. The moment I entered the shrine, I could feel the intensity of devotion. The shrine was packed with people, all trying to get closer to the central area to offer their prayers. Actually, a bit like Visitors Orthodox often monks. often recite the Ziyarat of Lady Fatima, Quranic verses um, like Surah Al-Fatiha, Ayat Al-Kursi, and personal supplications. Many pray for blessings, forgiveness, guidance, while others emotionally call on Lady Fatima for intercession, uh, often sharing the moment with loved ones over the phone. Um, yeah, that's what know, I have an issue with. So I have some Shia viewers, obviously, and they always reach out to me, ask me to look into Shiism, to look further into the supposed truth of Shiism. But it's exactly those practices that turn me off right away. Why is that so? Because, as you guys know, I come from an Orthodox Christian background, and intercession is nothing new for me. With an Orthodox Christianity, obviously the Orthodox Christians use Mother Mary as an intermediary between them and God. And in this particular instance here, we see how Shias use Fatima as an intercessor as well. And I've seen that all across the globe. You have so-called deities and goddesses within Hinduism, Buddhism, Theravada Buddhism, female figures that are supposedly interceding for you. But this is not why I accepted Islam. I accepted Islam because there was no intermediary between me and God. I simply could pray to God the way that I did when I was a little child. A natural state of me simply reaching out to God, asking Him for forgiveness, repenting, asking Him for guidance and nobody else. The atmosphere is filled with heartfelt prayers and recitations of salawat. 
obviously as a sunni muslim i don't believe um you know in doing such acts but it was interesting to learn uh what what's going on inside the shrine as a whole yeah, it's interesting to see how like going to Buddhist temples and seeing it, but you do see what is wrong with it as well, as a Sunni Muslim. But it's very beautiful, very beautiful design, geometrical patterns, absolutely amazing, optic-wise, sure. It was so hard to get very close to the area. The emotions, you know, people crying, their faces, uh, they whispered prayers, other calling their family. I just couldn't even get close enough to touch the central area. Um, however, I was squeezed in by, you know, sheer number of visitors. Um, I was able to see at some point, uh, I see, I've see. i seen that. I couldn't record it uh, out of respect. I just had to, uh, you know... Just use my phone once I left the, the, the place. As a creator, I always try to capture as much as I can to share with you all. However, since I couldn't use GoPro, uh, you know, they wouldn't allow me. I had to switch to my phone and it was limited. I couldn't document everything. But one of the biggest takeaways for me was the unity. I felt despite the differences in practice and beliefs. As a Sunni Muslim, uh, visiting the Shia shrine could have felt unfamiliar. But instead, it was powerful reminder of how you know connected we are as muslims it's the same origin of course the masjid is absolutely beautiful man i'm really really impressed with the design phenomenal guys it's maghrib time but it's it's actually a good time to come because i'm able to experience everything at once you know seeing the shrine hearing the adhan and, uh, this is very interesting and very intense experience for me. I am a Sunni, but would have been nice to hear the whole Adan. I know that it's a bit different. Islam, so. so as we were leaving, there was a group of people outside, and they were doing something like slapping and smacking their face, their chest, yeah. and I was told that this was like a. Oh, this is performed usually during Muharram. It's to commemorate Imam Hussein that, you know, people are showing solidarity uh, because of the things that Imam Hussein and his family went through, how they were killed. Um, so I don't know if, if that's the correct version. but that's I'm the first one to admit when I'm ignorant on such a topic. Therefore, I cannot make an educated statement on the matter. However, I'm still going to give you my perspective, of course. And what I see there is, even if it were true that the family died in a horrific fashion and therefore those people are mourning now, I don't understand why you would introduce it to the religion. Because we do know that the deen, the religion, was perfected during the lifetime of the Prophet wasallam. And we simply do not find such practices during his lifetime or during the lifetime of the companions, the early generations. This is clearly an addition to the religion. And therefore, again, even if we give them the benefit of the doubt and we say that the political view of the Shias is correct, just for the sake of the argument, I still wouldn't understand why I now need to slap myself. I was told, let me know in the comment section if that's true. <laughs> But those beats are sick, man. And it's all vocal, right? Obviously. Reminds me of raves in Berlin, Germany. After all. Yeah, side. it's interesting, but I wouldn't subscribe to it. For me, it's a ritual that has nothing to do with Islam. It's Just really watching it like this. I don't see my creator asking this All of me. Oh, that's a beautiful nice room. Oh, my 
Okay, guys, and this is already it. I'm going to cut it off here. We don't need to see her hotel room after all. Matter of fact, as I said throughout the video, I absolutely enjoyed the visuals, the optic of it all. I think the mosques are absolutely beautiful. The geometry, the calligraphy, the chandeliers. And as I said, I really like the long black covering of the women here as well. It reminds me of Orthodox Christian nuns after all. It looks very, very pious, very humble, very modest, absolutely beautiful. I appreciate that optic. However, now to the negatives, if you will. As I said throughout the video, I am ignorant on the topic and therefore I don't want to speak with arrogance because if you pair ignorance and arrogance, this is really the worst mix there is. I can simply speak out of my current perspective. And as I said, looking into certain practices within Shia Islam, I can clearly see that there are innovations after all. And I would believe that most Shias would actually agree with me that those practices have been introduced way later way after the passing of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, And therefore, for me personally, yet again, it is absolutely of no interest whatsoever because I would like to practice Islam the way that it has been revealed during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, And I see absolutely no reasoning to introduce other things to Islam because, as I said, the religion has been already perfected. It is a relationship between you and God. And I don't see now that I need any people to intercede for me. As I said, I'm already biased. I'm already traumatized coming from Orthodox Christianity because those people use intermediaries. They use Mother Mary. They use the saints and whatnot. Many different humans that are supposedly helping you to connect to God. And I hated that. This is why I left my initial religion and I returned to the original religion of mankind, which is Islam, of course, pure monotheism. And now when I see such practices, I see red flags. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>